let's see who we have here. I'm just waiting. It's uh, it's about one here, and let's see. Let's see. Let's wait and let's see if we have anybody joining us here. Okay. Good morning. So we have uh, African Neufen in the house. Good morning. So we'll wait and see if we can get uh, a few more people to join us. Yeah, so I, I'm still experimenting. So, you know, I'm just making sure this thing is working properly. So Good deal. Joseph, thank you for joining us. Happy holidays to you also. Um, yeah, let's see. So yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens here. Hopefully this one goes better than the, the last one. Um, hello, Debbie, how are you doing? I'm glad you're able to join us. Yes, so yeah. good, good. Yep, I'm glad it's working well. So, um, we can. Get a few more people in here. So it looks like, um, okay, so it looks like all of you guys came in so far through YouTube. Yeah. So I haven't seen anybody come in through uh, Facebook yet. So let me switch over and see what's going on with Facebook. Hmm. Mm hmm. (laughs) 
Alrighty, so um, I'm gonna just go ahead and get started here and uh, just see how things go. Um, welcome, welcome, guys. Um, what, so um, basically, um, I'm just experimenting, you know, um, you, you asked what made me select this platform. All right, so what I was, what I wanted to do is just be able to uh, uh, broadcast the event on both Facebook and YouTube at the same time. So that's what made me uh, go with the restream. Um, so uh, it allows me, and that's all I needed. And if you, if you're only doing like two uh, um, different platforms that you want to broadcast, then you can do it using the restream software for free. So um, you know, I'm not using any of the pay uh, upgrades for Restream. I'm just using the free version, and it allows me to add uh, a stream on Facebook and uh, YouTube at the same time. So um, without having to have like two computers or something, and plus, you know, the Restream uh, will handle all of the um, um, decoding and stuff and encoding of the video so it's not utilizing a whole lot of resources i'm using it right in my browser so um yeah so it, it seems to be working well um you know i did a stream a couple of days ago and uh, a live stream and i used uh, uh restream plus i used another software obs software and um that scene, it, it didn't work as well. It worked, but it, you know, I don't think it worked as well. Um, yeah. So very good. R. Hogan, welcome from Chicago. It's very cold, very, very cold in uh, Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. I can't even imagine that type of weather anymore. Right. So, um, oh, yeah. Yeah. So I feel for you guys. I've seen, uh, the uh, weather and like, you know, where I used to live, which is Atlanta. And, you know, I've seen the freezing weather, people's pipes are bursting all over. So um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's not uh, something I miss. Yeah. So Debbie, yes, you guys are essentially my, my lab test. You know, I, you know, I just, uh, you know, I, I don't have a problem experimenting with different things. So, um, so that's what I'm doing today. It's just, uh, yeah, figure what's the worst that can happen, you know, just won't work properly. Um, but I think it'd be okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Hogan, just back from Johannesburg and you ran into to that type of weather. Yeah, that just doesn't seem normal to me, that type of weather anymore. I'm like, you know, did uh, uh, the creator intend for us to live in these areas that get so cold? Uh, I just can't imagine that that was the intention. You know, it's like, you know, maybe the creator say, I'm going to make these areas very cold so nobody wants to live in there. And then we still go and live in those areas. You know, so, um, yeah, yeah. Dr. Cherie Watts, how are you doing? Yeah, so um, glad you can join us. Yeah, I'm, I'm always uh, looking to provide a solution. So, yes, our solution is migrating culture crossing. Um, yeah, so it, 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 that's the solution you're referring to. Um, yeah, so, um, Kofi, um, my, the address of, uh, of our community, um, yeah, I'll tell you, you know, how to get to our community. So it's in, in Somalia, um, yeah. Did I know my life is, okay. Peter Maya, the coldest you've known in your life is negative. 21 uh in daytime in the uk yeah yeah that's yeah cold weather is just not if, if i i tell you this much 
Um, when I die, I want to die in warm weather. That's that's my only request. Just let me let me pass away in warm weather. If you if you give me that, I'm okay. Um, I just don't want to be in cold weather. You know, if I take a dirt nap, so just make it warm for me, and uh, yeah, and I'll be happy. Um, yes, good, good to hear. I'm glad you are doing amazing. Um, three, yeah, that is good. Uh, so, so good, good, uh, and yeah, I mean, people, you know, uh say sometimes that Ghana is like too hot and, um, you know, there's no cool breeze. You know, of course you get like uh, on the mountains, you know, you get a nice cool breeze that comes in, you know, it's, you know, if you're looking for cold weather though, that's, that's not it, but you get a nice breeze when, you know, I, I had a house on the mountain and, um, and you know, at night you, you end up, you know, having to put a little cover on you know, so it was cool enough for me. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So, um, yeah. How's business? You know, business, business is uh, as well. You know, we, we have been busy, very busy. Um, and, you know, uh, we've recently released a uh, video uh, that the YouTuber Jasmine Ama did that's made us even more, uh, you know, busier. So we've gotten a bit more busy toward the end of the year and everybody's trying to get in on the half price home promo, uh, which they should. You should, you know, if you're still sitting on the fence, you should be trying to get in on the half price home promo because if not, you're going to be kicking yourself. And that, you know, that's what we're going to be discussing today. Um, primarily it's, um, why you want to take advantage of this uh because the prices are only going to go up guys <laughs> i keep telling people uh these prices are not coming down uh yes so uh let's see let's see uh, uh the uh, can i have your number um to build my house for me no we don't do we don't do custom home builds anymore. That's that's where, um, as you know, Brandon, uh, who started building when he got here to Ghana, he started with custom home building. And um, we have went away from that. That was why we formed Migrating Culture Crossing is to get away from the custom home building to focus on building homes in a single community where we can control you know every aspect of the home building process one of the things about trying to do custom home building here in a place like ghana and you know a lot of times um this becomes a, a stick a sticky issue between contractors and the uh homeowner they say well you know i got this uh this quote and the contractor keeps, you know, changing the quote on me and, you know, this happened, that happened. And a lot of times they're right. The contractors will get you into the quote. And then once you're into it and you've paid them some money, they'll change on you because they know they never could have performed the job at the price that they gave you. So if they do it like a bait and switch on you and, um, but a lot of times also there's so many unknowns here in Ghana because you don't have the logistics that you do in the West. If I go to uh, somewhere and get a quote in the West, it usually is going to be fairly accurate if I know what I'm doing. Because they have, you know, uh, there's going to be a nearby Lowe's. I know that I can get my product from or a nearby Home Depot. I know that, you know, I can get through, uh, you know, they have roads that are maneuverable. I, you know, so there's just so many things that, you know, when you come to somewhere and you build like in Ghana, uh, somewhere where you just don't know, uh, somebody says they have a piece of land and it's way out somewhere. You don't know what you're going to run into on that virgin land. 
you know. So um, when I went, you know, um, just to kind of give you guys some background on myself, I came to Ghana the first time is 2015 and it was October 2015 and that was my first time even on the African continent and during that time I said hey I'm going to relocate to Ghana even before I left I stayed here for one month and even before I left I said I'm going to relocate to Ghana and the purpose of relocating uh, was you know I wanted to come somewhere I chose Ghana um, because Ghana already had a large English speaking population. Um, I didn't necessarily uh, want to be forced to learn a new language. And I said, okay, Ghana has a large English speaking population. It has a very warm weather. And um, all of the uh, ladies are beautiful. So <laughs> why not choose Ghana? And um, so that's what I did. I chose Ghana and um, I went back. I stayed that entire October, went back, told my family. I met them at like a Christmas gathering. And I, that's why I announced to them that I would be leaving uh, to move to Ghana. And, um, and of course, you know, they kind of looked at me like I was crazy. And it was like, when, you know, Erica, you looking at moving to Ghana, it's like, um, yeah, in about 90 days. And then, you know, they really thought I was crazy because, you know, I had business uh, over in the U.S. And it was like, you know, how are you going to maneuver with your business? It's like, I'm going to, you know, sell it, shut it down and just relocate, you know. And um, it's like, what you going to do in Ghana? I said, I'm going to be semi-retired. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to build me a house and I'm going to build it off grid. And um, it was like, yeah, right. I was like, okay. Um, it's like, well, why? Um, you know, and I explained to them that one of the reasons I wanted to leave was um, because I felt that the world uh, economy was going to collapse. And I was like, I'm not having a good feeling about this world economy. And I just think something awful is gonna happen. And I just believe that the uh, center of it all, I was like, it's going to be the U.S. I was like, I don't know what's coming. I said, but there's just so much debt in the world. I, I, this just doesn't look good. So I prefer to be off grid and I prefer to be in a place like Ghana where I can be self-sufficient. It was like, well, if you believe that the world economy is going to uh, collapse and you believe things are going to get bad, why choose Africa um, as opposed to any other place? I said, well, uh, for me, you know, um, the advantages that Africa has is that Africa is, is not centralized. I said, look around in America, everything is centralized. There's like one or two companies who control all your food. If those one or two companies decide to go uh, uh, you know, broke, uh, you know, decide to withhold food, then you're probably going to starve. I say, but, you know, um, when I go to Africa, I see people with farms. I see food growing all around me. Even if I'm homeless, I can run up a tree and get me a coconut or a mango or something. It's a piece of corn. I say, you guys don't even have food growing here anymore. I say, if you walk down the street and show me some fruit trees, they you don't have them they cut them down so um so you know so that's why i kind of want it to be in a place like ghana and say you know if if the world if you compare the world to like you know let's say you have this big skyscraper and when everything is going well people want to be at the top of that skyscraper and they'll pay more to be at the top but if a fire breaks out in that building everybody wants to be at the bottom of that skyscraper I say, so if the world was a big skyscraper, then the U.S. would be right now at the top. And you, you guys say Africa would be at the bottom. I say, but the fire has already broken out and you guys don't realize it yet. So I'm going to where you guys say is the bottom because Africa is decentralized. And there's no, I say, I, I feel that I'll be much safer 
if things got very bad uh, around the world. Um, and then, you know, lo and behold, uh, you know, this was, of course, uh, 2015 when I was saying this. And then, lo and behold, the COVID broke out and they started rationing food. And uh, my family was calling me saying, hey, maybe you uh, had a point, you know, because it's hard for us to even get the right food sometimes. Stuff. So um, I was like, well, I haven't even noticed you no know, COVID. I say, you know, because I live in the bush. I have my own solar. I have my own water well. I have my own organic farm. I say, so I'm good. You know, I say, I don't have to wear no mask. I'd say, so, you know, you guys welcome to come and live with me if you want. So, um, so yeah, so that's why I moved. Um, and when I moved here, the first thing I did was, uh, you know, my partner, Brandon, who's the other half of the company, um, you know, basically Brandon had been here since 2008. So I came in 2016 to live and he came in like 2008 during the last crisis. So he had been building and uh, and so he knew the ropes. He had already been building uh, uh, various uh, eco-friendly homes, if you will, but he was going around from location to location building them. So he knew, he knew all the scams. He knew everything I should watch out for. So I felt comfortable uh, hiring Brandon to build my own house. And um, for those of you who followed me for a while, you know that um, Brandon also graduated from the same college that I graduated from in the US. So it made working with him very easy. And he's the one that helped me find my land, uh, you know, five acres in the mountain, and he built the house. So, um, so we had a good working relationship. And then, you know, and, and I kept telling him that he should just focus on a single location and build a community instead of going from location to location, um, because that's a sure way to lose money. So this is this was the goal when we came together to create Migrating Culture Crossing, is just to build in a single location and build the type of houses that we know people need. Um, and this is basically uh, what we're doing at Migrating Culture Crossing, because we saw, we've seen so many people lose money here. You know, people, for some strange reason, I don't get this. People come here to Africa and say they're going to build a home, but they've never built a home in the U.S. before. They've never built a home in the U.K. before. But when it comes to Africa, they say, I'm going to go to Africa. I'm going to find me some land and I'm going to build a home as if this is just some script somewhere. And for myself, I had already built a much larger home in the U.S. than I was trying to build here. And it took me more to build a much smaller home here in Ghana than a, a much, much larger home that I built in the U.S. It was much more difficult to build that house here because you just don't uh, have the same facilities available to you. And you don't have the same type of contractors. And uh, yeah, so, so, you know, so I warn people. If you're going to come to Africa um, and, and talking about you want a home, you better be very careful if you just come put your life savings and let somebody build you a home. Um, one of my friends now, she is Ghanaian born, but she was uh, raised outside the country. She spent most of her life in the U.S. and the U.K. And so she was very excited to come back to Africa and, you know, it's like, oh yeah, I'm, going, I'm moving back. I just want to get away from all the racism. I want to get away and, and, you know, and she had these rose colored shades on that I warned people about. And um, she's like, oh yeah, everything's gonna, you know, I'm gonna build me a house. And so she set out, um, first of all, she said, okay, uh, this was before migrating Coach Across and before we started this project, she wanted Brandon to build her house. And he said, okay, you know, um, yeah, I can build it. So she gave a deposit and, and you know, um, he was taking too long to get to her, she said. So she was like, you know, I need, I need my house faster. I need it faster. So he refunded her the deposit. And 
um, then we decided to do migrating coach of crossing. And I went back to her and I said, well, um, I believe you will benefit from our community. Um, you know, if you do, uh, we'll give you a special price, but it's going to take three years. And she said, Eric, I can't wait three years. I need the house. Like, can you do it soon? Can you do it? I was like, mm, I, I'm not going to sign up for that. I say, you know, but good luck. She said, okay. So she went and hired some contractors mm, who, you know, supposed to have been quote unquote good. The first contractor took her money, took a lot of money from her and disappeared. Whoosh. All right. So there's the first piece of money. And uh, now she's like, wow, you know, he just disappeared. Um, and, you know, now those rose colored shades that she had on are coming off and, you know, now she's angry at everybody in Ghana. And then so she found another contractor. And um, the next contractor built the home, built the home. But after the home was complete, she said the home is uninhabitable. The, the digester uh, that they built, it caved in. So she had to get that repaired. But she said the home is uninhabitable. So you built a home, you know, under the pretext that you needed it quick. He got it, he got it built for her quick, but it's trash, it's garbage. And she said, Eric, I'm just ready to give this home away. Um, you find somebody, just take it. I'm gonna leave Ghana. I hate Ghana now. And this is what I see happen to a lot of people who come here with rose colored glasses on and thinking things, you know, you have a U.S. or a U.K. mentality, and you're trying to make decisions based on that American mentality or that, you know, European mentality, and you're getting yourself into trouble. And so when we say hold your ropes, it's not because I want to deter you from doing your thing. It's not because, you know, uh, I don't get, uh, you know, that you need a home, um, but it's because we've been through those lessons. I mean, like I say, Brandon has been building here since 2008, 2009, he's been here. So, um, and I've been here since 2016. So we've seen just about everything imaginable. And so when you come here and you tell us how it should be, and we advise you, then I just back off and let you do your thing. And then, you know, you end up doing whatever, doing whatever. Um, but yeah, so this is what happened to my friend and, um, you know, now she's regretting it and there's nothing that we can do, but say we're sorry. Um, so yeah, so, you know, you have to be very careful coming in here. Um, let's see, let's look over at the comments here. Uh, America is Gilligan's Island, stranded in debt and dependent on food. Yeah, that sounds about right, uh, uh, Tonio. So that's, you know, and it's like it's been done by design. Like somebody literally in America uh, had to um, say, I am going to uh, take away, you know, we're going to systematically take away all of the independency from Americans and make them dependent on large corporations uh, and, uh um, this uh, fake food that everybody's now eating, you know, synthetic food. All right, Dr. Cherie, thank you for stopping by. And uh, yeah, definitely feel free to message me. Um, yeah, so uh, let's see. It has not yet hit us. Let's see, Peter Maya, it has not yet hit us fully. It will, uh, yeah, it, it, it's going to hit. It's going to hit hard for people who aren't prepared. Um, you know, um, people ask, is this whole, uh, you know, economic thing over with where we, we're seeing all these problems? I don't think it's over with yet. I think it gets much worse. Um, so, so yeah, so basically um, what we decided um, after I built my house in the mountains that, you know, if you've been following me, you know that. You know, um, I built a home in the mountains and uh, I'm going to share my screen. So for those of you who haven't saw the uh, 
home that I built in the mountains. I'm gonna share my screen and see uh, if this will, yeah, and see if I can show it to you. Let's see. Um, all right, so somebody let me know. Are you guys seeing, are you able to see my screen now? I'm gonna see something. Chat. Edwin, do we have plans uh, for other areas in Ghana? Um, no, actually, we don't. Um, right now, we're just uh, specifically, okay, brown, coat, blue, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, so actually, we're just focused on um, right here uh, at Migrating Culture Crossing and so Somanya. It's, you know, uh, 200 acres. So this is our retirement community, you know, now we're blessed to be able to get through this project and, you know, we can expand, then we will. But right now we're uh, extremely focused. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, let's see if I can do something here. Can you tell us about some of the unique challenges you and Brandon face building this home development and any ways we might be able to support or encourage you besides buying a home? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, just spreading the word, you know, I mean, the is the way that you, you can uh, help just just spreading the word. Um, but the challenges coming into a project like this uh, is basically, um, it's just a lot of unknowns, right? You face, you know, you go into uh, hundreds of acres, you know, there's unknowns, you know, we were originally going to build a much larger uh, community, but um, a large uh, portion of the land, it just has too much water. And so we, we're having to turn that area into a lake. So it now it becomes, you know, like a lakefront community, but we can't necessarily, or we're not necessarily charging any more because it's a lakefront community, um, right? So, um, but we're having to build fewer homes uh, um, because of that, because we can't use. So, you know, there's just, and then, you know, you have a lot of factions, you know, and here you have the chiefs, you have the government, you know, and they're not necessarily the best of friends all the time. So and you got to appease both sides, chief coming at you over here, government coming at you over here. And, you know, and you, you got to balance things uh, well with them because you, you got to respect both sides, right? Because both sides have the power to uh, disturb you with uh, your project. Um, so, you know, that's a challenge. And uh, uh, of course, you know, you're dealing with the family who owns the land. Um, yeah so so yeah uh, so i'm gonna see if i can go over here and all right so um let's go to all right so i'm at our home page if you haven't been to our website it is uh, migratingculturecrossing.com that's our website guys so i encourage you to go to the website and check it out. It's just full of information, um, everything that you want to know about. Um, so um, up here, you know, it gives us about us and then our story. And I'm gonna click on the our story because I wanna show you, um, it has on our story, it has some pictures of uh, when we started um, building so you can see me, um, like I tried my hand at, um, you know, when I, we, we started, um, I built an earth bag house and the earth bag house just means you take these, these rice sacks and you fill them with a mixture of, uh, clay and dirt, and sand and gravel and stuff. And then you got to, uh, temp, you know, you call it tamping. You got to tamp the, the bags on top of each other. And I did this for about mm, a good five minutes. And uh, that that was it, that was it, you know. 
and had um, hands all messed up. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to let you guys finish this. So people jump into this thing and they hear about they can build uh, an earth bag house for way cheaper. Like, oh, I build that earth bag house. And let me just tell you that you're not going to build an earth bag house for cheaper than uh, a house built with concrete blocks. Not going to happen. That's a myth. The only way that you can do that is if you do the labor yourself. And I'm here to tell you that the labor costs, if you if you hire somebody, your home, your earth bag home is going to be more expensive because the people doing this work that you see me holding this uh, and doing, they're going to charge you more. Um, and also because you're putting these bags on top of one another, your walls are not going to be perfectly aligned. They're not going to be plumb. They're not going to be straight going up and down. They're going to have this slight curvature in your walls. Now, do you know what's going to happen when your contractors, such as your carpenter and the people doing your tile backsplashes, they see that there's a curve in your wall? They go, you're right. They're going to charge you more money because they have to uh, make up the difference to make it look right. So my earth bag house uh, costs me more money than a house that's built with blocks, right? Because you can put those blocks on top of each other and, and they're just straight. So what we decided is that when we went and switched over and started doing migrating culture crossing, we would not do earth bags, but we would use earth blocks. So you still get the same benefits as using the earth bag, but you have the benefits of a block because it ensures that your walls are straight. Um, but the walls, of course, of the earth bag house are much thicker, you know, so my walls were very thick at uh, when I built my first house. So you can see some images on the website, um, like here's the image of the earth bag house coming up. And yeah, so even even doing something as simple as this, like, you know, you have to hit the bags on the side. This is very, it didn't look, it may not look tedious to you, but that's very tedious. Uh, yeah, yeah, you, 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 man, I'm telling you, that's some tough work. But, um, but yeah, so I, I was in the mountains. Here's the, the view of the mountain. And um, the house that I built, you know, end up having all the modern uh, looks to it. Uh, wood cabinetry, uh, as you can see. So it was very modern right in the bush. Uh, and this is the, the house. So, you know, and so this is the first home that I built in Ghana. And this is a drone shot of that house. And it was on, again, five acres. So, um, yeah, so I just wanted all of the comforts of uh, the West but I wanted to be independent. And you can see on the back of the house, I had uh, my own water filtration system. So I didn't have to go out and purchase no pure water. I could drink my water right from the uh, well. It was totally filtered. Um, uh, yeah, so this is the house. And then um, below that is just an, another earth bag house that Brandon had built uh, before uh, building mine. So this was uh, another house he built. So, um, so and he's built several more, but I just wanted to put this, this one on the site, the website. Um, so yeah, so let's see. Yep, so definitely hit the like button, guys. Yep, you're right, hit, the, hit that like button. You know, we need all the uh, likes that uh, we can get, you know. Um, yep, Leroy, welcome. Yep, Leroy is a, one of our customers, um, him and Yolanda. So, we're looking forward uh, to building your home as well. So, um, very good. So, let's see. Yeah, let's see. All right, guys, so let me, let's see, let me 
show you a few other things on our website. A lot of people, they ask questions and the stuff is on the website. But if you go to the website, you can see that we have all the floor plans. All of the floor plans are on our website. Like here's the uh, Sankofa duplex one bedroom. And you have the pricing, the size, and, um, you know, you also have the floor plans, uh, 3D floor plans out there uh, so that you can see everything and, and the 2D floor plans. So, yeah, you, you have all the information out here. So, um, yeah, on the floor plans, you see, um, we have added like this two bedroom. It's a two bedroom, one bathroom unit, but we have added a two, a two bedroom, two bathroom unit. Um, that's about twenty thousand dollars more. And we have added a uh, four bedroom home that's not shown here, but we have added a four bedroom home. Um, we also have uh, on the website virtual tours. So if I click on one of these virtual tours, it will load and it just takes a little time, but it, it will load uh, this uh, virtual tour here. So yeah, so and I can scroll around and the entire home. Yeah, so you can, you know, just go in this virtual tour and take a scroll. Um, and I can click on different areas, I can click on the kitchen and you know, it'll load another image and these are three, 360 degree images. So I can go around and scroll through, look at the, look at the top. Yeah. So you can get a very detailed view of how the home, uh, will look going to the bathroom. I can scroll around here. Yeah, so you, you know, and I can I can zoom out or zoom in on here as well. So if I want to, you know, zoom out, I can do a zoom out view of the bathroom. So this is, you know, so we have these virtual tours that uh, you can do as well. Yep, the earth back. Um, yep, Leroy. Yeah, yep. The the uh, earth back was you know it's definitely uh, a co much cooler building than one built with concrete. I, I'll tell you that. Um, um, yeah, in my backyard, nothing big. Hey, Norman, welcome, welcome. Yeah, so basically. Um, one of the things that uh, you know we're doing with this whole solar rooftop program um, was to we wanted to essentially create like a a virtual solar farm by connecting the solar panels from roof to roof. But um, here's the the thing with doing that is that the Ministry of Energy when you come into uh a location you say i want we wanted to be able to kind of you know install the solar panels and then uh to be able to sell the energy and um but the, the ministry of energy or the you know yeah the, yeah i guess it's called the ministry of energy they want you to apply for a license to be able to sell quote you know uh, energy to anybody so they have all this bureaucracy and we just are not feeling that it's worthwhile so basically um you know the way that we're running those people who are able to participate in our solar program um we're installing it up front you know uh, at no cost and then you basically pay over a period of time and then you will own the system so, um, so yeah, so if you want to place solar panels in other parts of your home or like you say, 
um, in your own backyard um, or on your parking uh, garage deck. If you get a parking deck, you know, uh, you know, you can place them. Yeah, it's not a big deal. So, yes. Uh, let's see. Also, let's go to the, um, the master plan. So um, if you haven't seen our master plan, here's the, you know, let me, you can go on our website. There's a, a page with our master plan. So here's the master plan. Uh, this shows the entire land that we are on, and it's uh, about 200 acres. Um, over here, you can see this half circle. This is what we call pocket communities. So the way, you know, we have uh, the entire property divided is that currently in this area that where it says future mixed use development, this is currently a mango plantation. It's about, you know, yeah, we have some uh, 15 acres or so mango trees and yeah, you know, and for those of you know, people have been asking, hey, are we going to preserve the mango trees here? Um, no, at some point, yeah, we will uh, cut the trees down. And um, but we are planting trees all over. And there's mangoes just literally all around us. So um, but we'll be planting more. But that area, yeah, eventually we'll, we'll uh, a lot of those trees will go. Um, yeah, so that will be this whole area up here. Uh, will be mixed use uh, like commercial and apartment buildings. Um, then we have a food forest in this area. And then back here in this area, that will be food uh, food forest um, of about 30 acres. And then through, you see where we have water reservoirs and, you know, we'll put, uh, you know, water uh, lakes coming through this area. And um, yeah, and then on this side, you actually have the pockets A, B, C, and D, um, where the homes will be built. And let's uh, so um, yeah, so that is essentially what our master plan looks like. And let's go down. You scroll down, you see a zoomed-in version of the pockets. Now, if you haven't heard of this concept uh, called uh, pocket neighborhoods, I encourage you. I have a video out here um, where, let's see, I interview Ross. And um, yeah, so this is the video. Famous architect Ross Chapman have been us design migrating culture crossing. So go. I encourage you to go back to that video um, because. We consulted with uh, Ross. He's very well known for this concept called pocket neighborhoods. If you just go on uh, Google and you type in pocket neighborhoods, you can see his website and all this work. So he's the one that coined this term pocket neighborhoods. And um, he lives in like, uh, I guess, an island off of Washington State. Um, but he basically came up with this term because he felt that the way in which communities are designed uh, in the West is that you have these huge squares and, you know, these huge rows of homes and, uh, you know, people have their backyard and then they come out, get in their car and leave and they never get to, you never get to know your, your neighbors. So he said, instead of doing that, just take a few homes and position those homes around a common area, so such as a courtyard. So you can see that the way in which we designed our pocket neighborhood is we took about 30 homes and each and we call it a we call it a pocket. Um, so basically uh, in this, uh, you know, let me check this um,
Let's see. Yeah, so basically, if you look at how we did the pockets, um, you know, you have a, a cul-de-sac in each pocket. And, you know, if you live in a community, you know the cul-de-sac area is always the prize area. Where everybody want to be in a cul-de-sac area. So, um, you know, so I'm happy to announce that everybody will have a cul-de-sac in our community. And um, you can see that we have a large green area in front of, in, in, you know, in the back of your home. So you come out and you go into this uh, kind of communal area and you get to know your neighbors because you're spending time not only in your own yard, but in this uh, common courtyard. So it helps you to get to know your neighbors. So everybody in each of these uh, pockets, right, it's like you're in your own community, you know, your own neighborhood. So um, you can see that. Uh, for the most part, in pockets A and B, we're sold out, and we're now selling in C and D. So, um, yeah, but you can go to the website, and you can see that also. And also, um, it's important to note that over in these these uh, areas where we have, like, the food forests and areas like that, we'll have farming. We'll have farming area going on uh, in these these areas. So there will be uh, commercial farming happening. So um, for the people who live in the community, the home buyers, some people have asked, you know, how will the food, you know, will the food and the food forest just be free? Um, it, it won't necessarily be free, but what we'll do is that if you are working to help manage the food forest, then you essentially have food credit. So it could be free. It may be free. It just depends on how much effort you're putting in to uh, help maintain the food forest, help manage the food forest, uh, you know, in, in the farming that's going on. Okay, so that's how that will be determined. Let's see. Um, all right, so let me go to some questions here. Um, uh, Peter, Maya, Eric, do you have geothermal cooling in any of your home plans? All right, so the um, geothermal cooling, it's created by the earth blocks, you know, or in my case, when I had my home built in the mountains, it was earth bagged, right? So the... Uh, purpose and that's one of the main reasons why we're using earth blocks as opposed to the uh, earth uh, as opposed to the concrete blocks as you know you know the concrete block is mainly made with sand it holds a lot of heat and if you walk into a home made with concrete blocks then it's much hotter than if you walk into a home made with earth blocks or earth bags so Yes, so that's part of uh, you know why we chose to go with earth blocks. The homes are much cooler. In fact, we don't um, we don't put air conditioners in our homes uh, by default. The the AC is there as an extra option, but it's not included by default because the homes are much cooler. Uh, we do have ceiling fans that come standard in our homes. Um, let's see. Yolanda, love the layout. Thank you, Eric and Brandon. Hey, thank you guys. Um, will there be any, Leroy's asking, will there be any restrictions as to what homeowners can or cannot add to their homes uh, so as to maintain a certain uh, autonomy uh, to the aesthetics of the community? I mean, there, there will be re restrictions, Leroy, but um, the homeowner there will be a homeowners association too and so you know a lot of the do's and don'ts you know will come as a result of the homeowners association um but yeah you know our goal is just to make sure that people don't come back there and just go crazy you know with things um but 
you know, we're not trying to uh, govern and be like big brother, you know, um, but, um, but yeah, but yeah, there, there will be some restrictions, but you know, we're not trying to overly restrict people uh, from enjoying their properties. Um, yeah. Let's see. Let's go. All right, so yeah, you can go and visit the website for the master plan. Um, let's see if there's, and we also have these uh, video walkthroughs. I showed you the virtual walkthrough, but we have the video walkthroughs as well. So, you know, you can go here and click on one of the videos and, uh, Let's see. Are you guys able to see this, this video and actually hear the sound of the video? Somebody let me know if you're able to hear the sound of this video that's playing. Okay, great. Yeah, so you know, the website has like all this information and, and that a lot of people, you know, we constantly get questions and, and um, yeah, and all that information is on our website. So I encourage you to definitely go out there and check it out, guys. Uh, let's see what else is worth talking about. Um, yeah, so uh, if, you, if you are in the, if you're in the West, a lot of times people tell me, I want to invest in Ghana. I want to invest in Africa. But, you know, Eric, you know, it's just too difficult for me to get scammed, uh, you know, this, that, and the other. Um, we are promoting our community. It's not only just a residential community, but also like a, a vacation resort. We are, you know, uh, next to a major university called the University of Environment and sustainable development. Uh, you can look them up. You know, let's see, uh, U E S E Ghana. So um, yeah, so you can go and 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 look up the University of Environment and Sustainable Development. Um, it's a it's a relatively new university. And you can see the images of it. Uh, they may be about I say about fifteen percent complete. In their build out, they're on about 300 acres. Very beautiful campus, and um, we have a very good uh, relationship and partnership with the university. Uh, the vice chancellor who runs the university, his name is also Eric, uh, Dr. Eric Miarco Sampson, and him and he and him and his staff has, have been over to Migrating Culture Crossing. Um, they are going to be sending students to us to work with us um, because we are putting into practice what they are teaching. They are a university that specializes in environment and sustainable development. Our community is a sustainable community and we're, you know, we're like uh, right next door to them. And that's partially why we chose to build in this area because the area we chose to build at it's a it's a tough area because it's so far off the road um but it's the only place that we could really get and still be close to the university so um you know so we're happy to be this close to the university and um 
Yeah, so they are already seeing students and yeah, and we will be working with them. Um, you know, they have uh, given us full use of their facility. And, and uh, yeah, and so we will have a very good relationship uh, with them. Um, there's also, in addition to this university, there's also a nearby uh, hospital. And um, if you've watched any of my videos uh, recently, you know that, uh, you know, I've been saying that I'm trying to get closer to the site until there's another uh, place built. You know, the other model home is finished on the site uh, to move. But all of the, you know, there's a guy that's close to our site. He's, he's building like uh, three or four huge apartment buildings. And all of those uh, units have been uh, already leased out to the university staff and to the uh, hospital staff. So if you are looking to invest, you know, have an investment property and you're wondering whether you, you, you're going to be able to find people to lease it, um, I'm telling you now that anything that's available back there that's nice, it's going to lease out instantly by somebody in the university, somebody from that hospital. Um, you know, our goal, as I said, is to have, uh, you know, kind of a resort back there where people will come to Ghana just to come and stay uh, in our community. And, you know, we will work with the university to offer like uh, classes. You know, let's say uh, your goal is to come and learn how to develop your own sustainable community where you can come stay in our community and have a class and, uh, you know, rent your home via Airbnb. And, you know, we'll manage that for you. If you are a buyer, you know, you a homeowner, we'll manage uh, your Airbnb process for you and we'll do minor maintenance. So, um, yeah, so that's why we kind of see our uh, community as a resort area too. So, you know, and we talk about that on the uh, website. Um, so the warranty, uh, if you are, uh, you know, it talks about the warranty, uh, and it gives a, we give a 10 year limited warranty in Ghana. There's no, you know, there's only one other company that does this in Ghana that I know of. And that company is from like France, or uh, Italy, um, and their homes are like, uh, very, very, very expensive. So, um, but we're used to this type of, uh, they call it a two, 10, you know, two year to 10 year warranty um, when you buy a new home in the US. And I imagine it's like that in other Western countries, but depending on the system, it, you know, um, it could be coverage could be one year, you know, like here it says uh, covers work and ship uh, distribution systems and building materials. Year one, year two covers specific systems, including plumbing, septic tank, digesters, electrical. Um, first five years covers waterproofing and leakages and, and 10 years covers structural components. <clears throat> so like I say, nobody else is doing that in Ghana. Um, once you buy that building at home in Ghana, you can forget it. You, you know, it's yours. So, um, yeah, but we, you know, this is uh, going to be our retirement community. So um, we want to build strong homes because we don't want you knocking at our doors for the rest of our lives. So, um, yeah, so we're, we're kind of unique in that regard. <clears throat> Let's see. Um We do you build any structures with round corners or framing? I want to get away from the square structures. Um, Tony, you know, no, not currently. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, we, we, we may in the future, but not currently. Uh, yeah. 
Okay, let's see. Also, let's uh, go back here. Um, we also have an extensive frequently asked questions area. So, you know, and it's it's dynamic. We try to update it uh, as we get new questions. So, um, yeah. So that's the website, guys. So, you know, I encourage you to uh, go out to the website and check it out. Um, lots of information out there for those of you who have not checked it out. Uh, also, let's go here. So here's uh, when we first started talking about uh, building and offering homes at half price, you know, you can go on my Facebook page and I got uh, the first post is pin and it shows, you know, the renderings. So you can see a lot of our renderings out here. Uh, and then it also shows uh, like these are, you know, from my actual house that I had built in a mountain. And, you know, the houses that we're building out at Migrating Coach Crossing are based on the house that um, I built in the mountains, but uh, they're smaller. The homes that we're building now are smaller and there's a lot of more upgrades. You know, we have a lot more upgrades and uh, the, the homes that we're doing now. Like for instance, you see the home that I originally built, um, you know, um, you know, it had, you know, the, the windows, the, the jollies, uh, as we call them, windows. Now we have the sliding windows and the new homes. Um, yeah, so, but yeah, you know, I use, use granite countertops and I had uh, real hard wood put in. And that's the same thing that we're doing at the new homes. So, yeah, so, you know, we're doing a lot of the same things. Yeah, so you can go out and see um, very self-sufficient and, you know, similar design. Uh, you have the sloping roof so that you can do rainwater collection and, you know, it will collect uh, the solar panels can be placed so that they can collect sun at an optimal angle. And also you have, uh, let's see. You have these high windows that uh, they call them clear story windows so that they can allow a lot of the sunlight to come in so that you're using less energy. And um, our homes are, you know, people question us about the look and it's like, oh, can you build something uh, that has more of a modern look? Well, our homes are designed to look like this because they're more functional than most modern looking homes right they're designed to be net zero energy homes so there's a method to our madness we're not just building uh for looks right um i mean if you if you eat if you eating just based on taste you probably be eating mcdonald's you know but hopefully you're not eating just based on taste hopefully you're eating uh because of health and uh, it's not just based on, you know, what you believe tastes good, you know, otherwise you'll just be eating things like McDonald's or you'd be eating candy all day. Um, yeah, that's the same thing with our homes. It's not just based on how it looks. And uh, to be quite frank, I think uh, it looks uh, great, but a lot of people, you know, they want something more modern, they say. But at any rate, um, yeah, so you can go on my Facebook page and see that post, um, which has a lot of those pictures. Um, yeah. And Sheree, I'm liking your post there. So, uh, and here's a, uh, you know, I have a video out here too, that just basically shows the new home, you know, it's a walk through an actual walkthrough of the real, uh, home. So I'm going to play that video too. Greetings. Here's a first look inside of our Sankofa Series Eco Home. Enjoy and be sure to like, follow, and comment on hashtag Migrating Culture Crossing.
Again, all hardwood. They're all hardwood, granite countertops. Appliances, very uh, high, high class appliances. Okay, so yeah, so that's the uh, video that shows the actual home, uh, the model home. That's the model home. That's the Sankofa duplex one bedroom model home that uh, we have built out there. And again, you know, everything you see um, is, uh, you know, just then it's pretty much luxury class, you know, people. Uh, we didn't, like I said, we didn't intentionally come out and say we were going to build luxury homes. But once we looked at it, that's essentially what we had out in the bush. We had luxury in the bush. Um, the uh, brands that uh, we're using for the appliances are NASCO. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, it, it's a Ghanaian brand. It's not built in Ghana, but, you know, it was, it's, it's a Ghanaian brand. And, um, you know, and they have some very... Uh, quality appliances and electronics. So we went with them. Um, let's see, Sam is asking, how much is a two bedroom hall, please? Um, all right, so if you uh, go and these, and I'm telling you guys, these prices are going to go up, you know, they go up 50, 15% uh, by the uh, beginning of the year. So I'm telling you, Get in while you can. The prices are increasing by like 15%. You won't have uh, this half price promo going on anymore. So please get in if you are sitting on the fence. Um, but let's go to the pricing as it is now. Uh, you can either you can go on our website and you can see the pricing, or you can also go to my Facebook page. Um, I just did a post here on my Facebook page, uh, maybe a couple, two or three days ago. And let's see, here it is right here. Um, I'm gonna put this, uh, I'm gonna copy this link and I'm gonna uh, paste this link for you guys in the, in the chat, see if I can. That's it all. All right, so that link goes to uh, that I just posted. It, it, it'll show you the floor plans. And next to the floor plan, you have the retail price and you have the half price promo, right? So, and that's the same code for Duplex Studio is telling you that this one is sold out though. This is our uh, smallest unit, it's sold out. Uh, then we have the, Sankofa duplex one bedroom it has retail it has half price promo and then it has a link to the same uh unit on our website so you can get right there um now sam was asking about the two bedroom all right so we have a two bedroom one bathroom the retail is one hundred and eight thousand nine hundred dollars if you get it under the half price home promo um, which ends December the 31st, you get it uh, 54450 But to qualify to get the half-price home promo, Sam, remember, you have to pay this entire uh, amount of the half-price home promo, which would be 54450 You pay the entire amount up front, and you're willing to wait three years uh, for delivery. If you purchase it under the retail price, then you get you get a payment plan. You can pay 30% up front. You pay 30% uh, when the walls are complete. You pay 30% when the roof is on. And then you pay the final 10% uh, at delivery. And you get your home in two years. So it depends on what you're looking for. We're giving people uh, a fantastic discount because, to be quite frank, these people are helping to finance the project. If I was to go out there, you know, me and Brandon go out there looking for investors, they're going to say, well, we want a, uh, this big return on our money. 
we'd have to pay them. So we said, you know, if the home buyer has the funds and they'll be willing to uh, essentially become like our investors, then let's get past that uh, discount onto them. And let's ask for three years before uh, they receive um, the house. So that's why we do it like that, because the home buyers are taking a risk in us, you know, and they're funding this project. So we give them a huge discount. So that is the same code for two bedroom, one bath. But we also recently added a two bedroom, two bath out here. We don't have a rendering of that, but we do have the floor plan. And this is the floor plan, two bedroom, two bathroom. It's a uh, so it's twenty thousand dollars more than the, the two bedroom one bath. So it's one hundred and twenty eight thousand nine hundred dollars. You can get it half price at sixty four thousand four hundred and fifty. Um, we also recently added a four bedroom house. Um, it is two hundred and three thousand nine hundred dollars. Currently, uh, you can get it half price promo one hundred and one thousand nine hundred and fifty. Now. Like I said, these retail prices are going to go up at the beginning of the year, about 15%, guys, I'm telling you. Um, we can't keep these prices forever. We've been having these prices the same since we launched and the inflation has been eating us up and we've been doing this half price home promo. So the half price home promo is gonna disappear. The retail prices are gonna go up. So if you're on the fence, please, 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 Go ahead and execute your construction agreement and uh, take advantage of it, guys. I'm just telling you right now. Okay. Hey, R. Hogan, I appreciate uh, you coming by. Um, yes. Luxury in the bush, Leroy. That's, that's what we have. Uh, so at any rate... Um, yeah, if you have uh, questions, uh, you know, feel free to shoot, uh, you know, give me your questions, you know. Um, yeah, we're already almost an hour, 20 minutes into the live stream. So go ahead and, you know, ask me your questions. Um, our, our vision is just essentially to have a community that's off grid, that's independent, self-sufficient, independent, and it has a food first mentality where, you know, all of the homes are, you know, will be planted with like edible landscaping. You know, you walk out your home and there's uh, edible food, there's medicinal food um, that's just growing. So, you know, and of course you can change your home how you want and put what you want there. But that's the goal is that um, we don't want you uh to be dependent on one or two companies for all your food needs but your food should be grown as close to you as possible right I, I want my food to come from the farm to the table i want to see the people who are growing my food i want to see the chemicals uh that they're trying to put on my food you know so this keeps people responsible is in, in a nutshell the further away that your food uh, is produced or grown from you, the, the more likely that you're going to be enslaved at some point. That's just how it works. Um, if your food is produced uh, 10,000 miles away from you, you're not going to have any independence because you can't control what that person or what those people put in your food. By the time it comes to you, you just happy to be able to buy it and eat it. You don't care. They can put all kind of drugs and chemicals in your food. You have no say. You can't go and sit down and say, hey, I don't want you putting that on my food. But when a person is in your own community and those people are uh, growing your food and you walking past them, you can see what they're putting on your food. You can say, whoa. Hey, buddy, don't, you know, don't, don't put that on my food. You know, we need to have a, we need to have a meeting here about what's being put on our food. You are in control at that point. But when you allow that food to be uh, imported in these cans and all these uh, plastics to you, 
you you don't have any control over the chemicals in that plastic, over the chemicals in that they're putting. This this uh, tomato paste that everybody in Ghana is using now, this Maggi uh, and bouillon cubes that everybody's using, um, that stuff is toxic to the human body. And um, our goal is to get away from that and just live a simple and natural organic life as much as possible. Not everything. We're not going to have... Uh, 100% organic everything, but we can make a good go of it, you know, if you're around like-minded people is what I'm saying. Um, so our entire community is 200 acres. Uh, now, if you're asking how big is the land around your own home, if you have a single family detached home, one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, um, <clears throat> for the most part, uh is 80 by 80 uh lot you know some of some of our earliest buyers you know like our six or seven first buyers uh they got a bit larger land but for the most part most people have an 80 by 80 lot if you if you're on a duplex um the duplex lot is about 100 by 70 so if you're on a duplex you own half of that so um yeah, so, you know, out of that, so that means you got 50 by 70 lot if you're on a duplex. Uh, yeah. So for the uh, for the, the, the food forest and the farming area, uh, Peter, my, you're asking how large is that area? We're reserving like 30 acres for all of the farming and the food forests. Uh, How big is the uh, building, the two bedroom house on? Um, yeah, so all of that, yeah, you can definitely, again, go to our, my website and you can see, you know, go to the house plans, guys. It has all of the specifics about the size, you know, out here, two bedroom. 819 square feet livable, 76 square meters of living space, okay? Let's see. How big is the space? Yes, you're absolutely, absolutely right that our goal is to give people uh, community because a lot of times people move here, locate here from the diaspora and they buy land way out in the bush and then they build and they're the only ones there. And then once they're here and they build, they have regrets because in order for them to uh, socialize, they have to travel long distances uh, to be around other friends. And um, so we said, you know, if we just build in a community, then, you know, you would have other people right there. You wouldn't have to worry about it. So Anne says, I like the blend of modern and natural. Yep, yep. And that's, that's the whole goal is that we're bringing in the new, and, um, you know, we're still maintaining uh, opals that have worked throughout time. You know, I mean, uh, uh, mud building has just worked throughout history. So why change that? So um, you just use the mud, you know, in a modern way, which is the earth blocks. Okay, guys, so... Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, if, if, you know, if you don't have any more questions, uh, again, you know, the half price home promo coming in soon. So um, execute your agreement. You can go, you know, you can go right on our website and you can complete your order. Um, let's see. Like you go on the website and, and you click reserve now. And then you just go through the process, boom, 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 and you select. Once you get down here, it says, you know, your product, you select which unit you want to purchase. Um, 
you know, you want to purchase two bedroom, you see that it will already, you know, it'll take your 50% discount off and then you just go ahead and place your order. Simple as that. Once you place your order on our website, you'll receive a construction agreement. That construction agreement uh, is about 10 pages or so. Um, you can do an online signature. Once you do your online signature, we do the online signature. You have 10 days. Once you execute that construction agreement, you have 10 days to wire your funds into our Ghana bank account. And that's what seals it. You know, that that determines when your house uh, will be built. Right. So very simple process, guys. If you have any problems, uh, feel free to contact me. But uh, extremely we make it extremely simple uh, to do this. So, yeah, that is it. Um, let's see. Yeah. All right, guys. So, uh, let's see if we have any, well, let's see if we have any last questions that, uh, I can answer and then we'll call it a day. Okay, so okay, bless 360. Am I still going to get the discount if I only have 20,000 up front and want to make uh, 20,000 up front and want to make a payment, uh, pay the rest of the money? Uh, no, if, if you, yeah, yeah, I mean, um, you won't get the, the half price. Promo in order to, you know, guys, in order to get that half price promo, um, the requirement is really that you have that full amount. So it depends on, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, you, you can contact us to see exactly and let me see exactly um, what your details are. Okay, bless 360. Um, I mean, contact us like right away and let us look at it but you know you you really need to have like the full amount up front um but you know contact us and let's see um what you're working with um leroy asks how often will you be doing this live um i guess you know depending on the response now that i'm kind of getting the kinks worked out and i see how it works um i might start doing it on a regular now um you know, as, as we uh, really move into the new year, I'll start doing it. I don't know exactly how often, but it'll start now being on a regular basis because it was actually easier than I, I uh, expected it to be, um, especially, you know, with this software that I'm using. Um, yeah, they make it very simple. So, yeah, I'll start doing it on a regular basis. Um, okay, let's see. Yeah. But yeah, again, if you haven't done so, you know, like the video, uh, like, share, you know, subscribe and, um, you know, let me know what you think about what we're doing. Um, I've been, you know, trying to make videos of our progress and um, yeah, everything hasn't, you know, gone uh, the way that we planned, but we're making a lot of progress. I mean, uh, Brandon is out there on the site, you know, um, trying to make things happen. And uh, it's a task when you build in, in Ghana, people just don't from the West, you know, they have no idea of uh, the things you have to go through to uh, get things done in, in Ghana. It's, it's, it's not easy. Oh, so um, yeah. All right. So, yeah. So we appreciate, I appreciate you guys, uh, you know, for, um, joining me on this live, uh, you know, taking your time. And uh, like I say, I'll try to do this uh, on a regular. And um, you guys uh, enjoy the rest of your day. All right. Bye-bye.